Hey everybody, it's Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good evening to you. Uh, sorry for the late upload, didn't want to get nobody worried. But we, as you might know, uh, severe weather moving in the Midwest today, and I was actually under a tornado warning up here in Milwaukee. So figure I'll wait until it passes. That way I don't get cut off or any problems in the middle. Oh, but it is a blessing because we just, just got our update as of 6 p.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Uh, disturbance 1, which is Invest 98L, which is going to be IOTA, probably a depression at first, of course. It's going to be 80% chance, y'all. It, it is a tropical uh, wave located over the eastern Caribbean Sea. It is progressing through. It is starting up below Puerto Rico, and God bless y'all over there. I know y'all going to be starting getting some heavy rainfall from the beginning of it. Now, uh, Ada is a tropical storm, of course. It's 60 miles per hour. It is moving north at 7 miles per hour. It's pressure's down to 989, and Theta is Tropical Storm Theta, 70 miles per hour. It might even get a hurricane under its name. We'll see, but from what, from what I can tell, it turns and curves before it even goes anywhere near Port Portugal. Now, as far as the NOAA, what they have for y'all is they show that it's a tropical storm uh, and all the way into landfall maybe in the Florida, Florida Panhandle, but that's where the center location is going to be. All the weather is going to be in Florida. Uh, you do have a tropical storm warning uh, in the Keys because it's going to be pretty much coming in hot and then cooling down and slowing down as it comes closer. But you are in a tropical storm watch uh, for western Florida because the winds uh, literally will be tropical storm force. It'll be at least 39 miles per hour. Now, here's your area of probability of who's going to get tropical storm force winds. It's not a big probability. It is going to be downgrading quickly, even though a couple models do show that it might not. Uh, but I will go over that with you so you can see everything. Now, as far as the 10-meter winds from the Euro, I'm going to show you Euro and I'm going to show you GFS. And this is showing that you're not getting much winds at all. That's impact winds. That's just 12 to 14 knots. We're talking 20 miles per hour winds in the 20s, and this is according to the Euro. And as you can tell, the center goes over uh, the Florida Panhandle, then starts moving a little bit west, and all the damage was already done because they don't have any more power with it. So all the rain and all the wind is going to be pretty much over Florida. Now, if you look at the next five days, you can see who gets what uh, as far as the wind gusts from this thing, and you can see the wind gust gets about 30 to 34 miles per hour uh, right in the Tampa Cape Coral, all in this section right here. But the highest I've seen was 34. And then as it gets towards the Florida Panhandle, it could get up another intense moment. I see one of 38 miles per hour, and that's about the highest I do see as far as the wind gust goes. It don't seem like it's going to be a lot going on, guys. It's just a few intense moments, so just bear with it. Now, as far as the full forecast, this is what the area is going to get as far as maximum uh, wind gust for the next few days uh, and the highest like I said is right here at 38 miles per hour and that's wind gust now if you go and look at the precipitation that you're going to get from this rain for the next four days you will see that the heaviest part is in northern Florida it is in the Florida Keys it's not showing that it is in a Tampa area like the GFS is showing it was showing it would be right above uh, Apalachicola pretty much west of Tallahassee and east of Tallahassee it's supposed to get heavy, heavy rainfall. And if you look in the purple, you'll see that's up to 11 inches in some spots. The, that five you see is that white in that brown area. But that purple, that purple can get up to 10, even up to 13 inches. It depends. It says the highest is 12 inches. So we'll see. But in this area, beware. You could get some flash flooding if the euro is correct on this. Now, if you look at the total precipitation, zoom in on where you're going to get the impacts. You can see where the heaviest is going to be. And you can see for the next five days, it is going to be 12 inches of rainfall in this area. Uh, surrounding that will be somewhere around 10 to 11 inches. But still, that's a lot of rainfall. Now, if you look at the cyclones and see exactly what they're saying for probability, uh, one showing that the most probability path to blue one is the center of location of the low pressure. We'll go over the uh, Florida Panhandle. Uh, but the, all, the, all the impacts, like I said, is going to be on the east side of the storm. So it will be over Florida. Now, if you notice, one's just zooming way out and going straight out. That's co-amps. Co-amps is showing that it'll just lawnmower right on through, and it'll show a little bit more intensity. Uh, we'll go that with you. Now, this is a 10-meter winds, destructive winds, according to the GFS. And the GFS shows that it does come close, but the main impact of the, the most destructive winds 
will not be on land. All I'm showing that you're going to get is anywhere from 20 to 24 knot winds. So we're talking 30 miles per hour winds. It's not going to be destructive, guys. Now, as far as the wind gusts, as you can tell, according to GFS, the wind gust does get up a little bit more. It does get closer. And, he, and it looks like it is the Tampa area, but it always stretches down all the way down to Cape Coral. It's all the way from down here, all the way to northern Florida, where the most wind gust is going to be impacting during this um, landfall, if you want to call it a landfall. Now, here it is from Tampa, so you can see exactly what the wind gust will be. As you can see, the color palette, 34 knot wind stretch all the way out. Uh, almost to Sebring, goes way out into the center of Florida. But the most heaviest part will be 42 to 46 knots. It will be around the, on the edge of Tampa. So be aware when this thing does move through. According to the GFS, it will be some winds that will move through it. But it will be quickly, and it will be over, and it shouldn't be too damaging. Maybe some power outages, uh, pockets of that. Now, as far as the total precipitation, according to the GFS, since the track is showing different, it does show you do have some periods uh of three inches uh cape coral you get three inches and tampa the edge of tampa uh right below you looks like it'd be a little over two inches so it looks like cape coral will be getting the impact since it is doing a counterclockwise motion and all the rain's gonna be flooded in right there also southern uh florida you see you do got a pocket of one to two inches that could happen and y'all already waterlogged so anything right now really isn't good uh, now as far as the intensity model you can see most of them show that within the next nine, 90 hours, that most of them will be either a tropical storm or on its way to strengthening. Uh, but it, it won't be over water. I mean, right at four, four and a half to five days is going to be the most intense part of it. And it's not showing that it's going to make it. A couple like the ship and the IVC, and they show it could be a hurricane. Uh, as far as that line that you saw go through from Coamps, this is the path that is predicting it will take. But the Euro and the GFS is both showing that it is going to head north. As far as the center location, uh, all the storms will be in Florida, either North Florida or West Florida. It depends if Euro or the GFS is correct. But just going off that, please be aware, there is a possibility and a moment to where the dry air backs off, like I said yesterday, and it has a chance to intensify. So just in case it does, be ready for a cat hire and just be ready for a possible hurricane that could be possible as far as the winds. Now, if you look at it, this is the h -mon. This is over on Tropical Tidbits. You can see that it does get pretty powerful as far as the 10 meter winds goes. And it gets all the way up to 78 knots of winds. And this is the most powerful right here. But it does show that it will be a strong 78, 978 millibar uh, system as it moves in towards western Florida. So it could be a little more winds. It could actually get up to 50 miles an hour winds as it breaks down. So just be aware, just in case the HMON is correct, make sure we keep everything in order that we know what's going to go on. Now, as you know that we do have our other systems that will be popping through. This is our area to be looking at. This is what we're dealing with right now. We do have something popping up soon around the 15th. And then from the 17th to the 21st, it's going to be a thing. And we got to figure out what this is because I show that there is a pretty big mess in there. Plus, we have one late November and we still got the ones in December. So we have a while before we get through this. Now, if I go through the GEFS... You can see exactly all the precipitation that goes over Florida within the next 48 to 60 hours. And it just gets all the rainfall and then the dry air pushes it out. But if you notice down here in the next 48 hours, we get a swath. We get a, a center of low pressure. This is going to be your Invest 98L. And it looks like it has different paths. So if you look at this path, this is GEFS. It shows that it goes right on by, right below Jamaica. And Jamaica, you look like you'll be in some light rains anywhere from two to three inches and this is every six hours two to three inches okay so it could be adding up to you but it will pass by you and it won't be staying long and i don't see any landfall so far however i do show that we do have some problems as far as being close because the models don't agree with each other so i will stay on track and let you know what's going on with that but once again you can see puerto rico is getting heavy rainfall they will be coming i'm showing within six to twelve hours mark you're going to be in some rain, man. So please be aware down there. Now, as it passes by lower Jamaica and it passes to the, to the uh, Western Caribbean, 
it mm-hmm. it makes a sudden turn to the south. It's the pressure from the from a dry air, uh, a dominant high comes through, and it pushes it towards Honduras. So it's possible that this could be going towards Honduras or Nicaragua. It all depends. I know it's going to be Central America. I did show that it was Belize. I did show it was, it was a Cancun before in some models, and it's still showing that as well in the members. But as you can see, it looks like they get all the impact from this rain if this shows true, according to the GEFS. And that's the last thing that these guys need. Now, if you look at this GFS V16 parallel, it had always been showing the intensity. But if you watch it down here on the bottom right, and this is five days away, just so you know. Five, and then now we're moving to six days. And then a week away, this intensifies. And then it makes a sudden turn to the north. It gets real close to uh, Jamaica, but it goes towards Dominican Republic as a hurricane. And you can see it intensified pretty greatly. It went down to 952. That is a powerful powerful hurricane guys if this model still shows true and then it goes right over within the next 10 days over dominican republican so god bless you guys i hope that this does not happen it's just what i'm showing in the models for you that's model run uh, information only now if you look at all the members you can see in 72 hours it does start festering up uh, you can see it right here below uh, jamaica between jamaica and dominican republican it does start popping up but then we have different outcomes like you can see, it does show Jamaica. I know it's small to see, but it is does show that it's right below you as it passes by. And a lot of these members, a lot of these members do not show that any kind of landfall for Jamaica. It does get close. So I will I will find out what your winds and your rain will be from that. But so far, I'm not showing any kind of landfall. But if you look at it and you see when you go all the way to 10 days, that it had different incomes, uh, outcomes, sorry. You have some that shows that it goes towards Belize and uh, the Central America. Some that goes towards Honduras and Nicaragua. And you see right here, this one was Belize as well. This one was Cancun. Uh, this one goes to- closer towards the islands. But then this one up here, this one up here sh- still shows what has been showing for two weeks. That it gets into the Gulf of Mexico and it becomes an issue. And once again, for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. So we'll see how true that is. I mean, it's been showing that for quite some time now. Uh, I have a big update I want to do in the morning. So please make sure you subscribe. Hit that button because it's a video you're not going to miss. So let me bless you guys tonight. I hope you all have a blessed night. And as you know, we need to keep our mind in order. So God bless you. (laughs) I hope you had a great day. The second epistle of John. The elder unto the elect lady and her children. Whom, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace, from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil, evil deeds. Having many things to write unto you, I would, I would not write with paper and ink. But I trust to come unto you, and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. God bless you all tonight. I hope you have a great night. And remember, if if any doctrine does not put Jesus Christ on a pedestal as the Almighty God, as our Savior, do not listen to him.
all glory does go to God. Amen.